Thank you everyone in the room and online and everyone who would be watching the recording. Um, this talk is called Five Approaches to Increasing Your Happiness or Your Open Source ha Happiness. Uh, and it, I would talk about five agreements and which are these five agreements I will tell you a bit later. And I will first start uh, introducing myself. Uh, my name is Stefka Dimitrova. I work at VMware, the open source program manager, uh, and uh, in the most open source program office. Uh, uh, Dawn Foster is my manager. She's here in the room. <laughs> and I work on community strategy project health. And I've been in tech for about uh, 10 years, started as a consultant. Uh, I have a business economics background, so I was a non-tech in the tech company. Um, uh, went through and developed my way uh, into the program office and open source uh, with in these years. Uh, so uh, I have been learning and um, developing. Uh, and I also have my other hobbies and interests where I'm learning a lot, uh, work uh, a lot with uh, kids and teenagers in the outdoors. I do improvisation theater work, uh, most for social. Um, causes. So this all um, day, daytime jobs and hobbies or other activities have um, have brought the challenge of uh, needing to balance between all and needing to find the meaning and the uh, uh, purpose in uh, all the activities that I do. So for that. Um, I really uh, got uh, recently reminded about these agreements that I will share about and that they helped me uh, remember why I do most of the things that I do and how, how I can be more successful. And when I talk about agreements and in the open source context, what are the first things that come to your mind? I guess like license agreements or contributor agreements or all the compliance work or <clears throat> everything related that needs to be documented. And here I, um, as I said, I was recently reminded uh, about a book that I've read many years ago, The Four Agreements by John Miguel Ruiz and then The Fifth Agreement. That's why I tried to summarize all the five. And this um, best-selling author is, is actually sharing a total wisdom of uh, living a life free of uh, beliefs and self-judgments that are rather limiting us than uh, allowing us the freedom to live our lives fully. And uh, I was reminded about this book by these young actors. This picture is by a play that uh, uh, they are so young and in so simple way they represented this profound wisdom. And uh, I started thinking, okay, do I do that in my day-to-day -day work? Do I apply, apply these principles and in what extent I could do better? If these kids can understand them, explain them and put them in art in such a beautiful way, why uh, me as a grown-up doesn't do it uh, more often? And um, that's what I'm actually wa wa I want to achieve with this presentation is to show you these uh, agreements, remind you about them. Actually, uh, who in the room maybe knows about this book, have read the book, have heard about it? That's great because that's what one of my goals to tell you something that you probably don't know or don't have in this framework because this is a really simple frame to put things which uh, you've probably been considering in um, other contexts. And then um, I will share some of the examples how I apply it in the open source program office work that I do um, and maybe inspire you to have some, some ideas how you can apply as well. So starting with the first agreement, uh, it's, it's called by Don Miguel Ruiz, uh, be impeccable with your word. And uh, I should have started with, I'm not an expert in uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, in being impeccable. And I know many knowledgeable people who've worked and developed themselves a lot in that. And also they don't 
call themselves experts because we are all learning and we are all growing in that. And uh, uh, in this particular agreement or topic, what uh, what it's about is really taking full responsibility of what we say, what we think, and in having that integrity with also what we do. So it's not just about um, uh, how, how I talk to other people, but also how I talk to myself. All the self-talk, all the inner critics, and everything that affect enormously our life and our relationship with others, which in, in the end is also how they affect our work. Uh, and uh, this includes also, of course, using the constructive and inclusive language, uh, being free of judgments. Uh, and in all communication channels that we can do that. So it's uh, mm, to be considered in emails, in meetings, uh, uh, and in, <clears throat> in some cases, um, also all the language that we are using affects others. So how we, how will we do it and uh, try to be integral with all of that. Second is related. Uh, uh, because when, when we've done or spoken something, then it affects others. And how we will take this? Don't take things personally. Don't take anything personally. And uh, this is a picture of my dogs. <laughs> and I was happy seeing dogs here around. But uh, what dogs are really good at is really uh, looking innocent because they usually don't do things. things uh, uh, with the intention to harm anyone, uh, even when they are so dirty and uh, trying to lie on my couch or whatever mess they're doing here at home, I know that uh, I shouldn't take that personally. <laughs> and of course, with humans, that's much harder to do because uh, as humans uh, and when we are overworked, burned out, then there is a lot more uh, tension and it's easier to forget that uh, we own this, this uh, responsibility and this power of how we react in, circum in certain situations. So, um, yeah, just a bit more to the don't take things personally. Uh, it's really about uh, um, that we are uh, clear about how, uh, how we, we react on the response when, uh, and especially in tough conversation, when someone might, might think uh, this is pointed directly to them. Uh, and my, my personal example, uh, in my day-to-day -day work, I need to remind some cases, maintainers or teams, then they need to do certain things, uh, like uh, re responding in time, some time frame of, on dependable alerts. And this is just a reminder on my side. And when this comes in a bad timing for that person and they react to my reminders, uh, if I take this personally, uh, that will spoil, spoil our relationship or I might uh, start feeling dissatisfaction of work because then my work involves these hard conversations or reminding people of uh, things that they failed to do in time. And when I realize that their reaction is not personally to me, it's just a reaction of being uh, overloaded and trying to balance priorities, then it's much easier to, to do that daily work. So next one, which I thought is the uh, third agreement, uh, is don't make assumptions. And as I mentioned, I work with kids and teenagers a lot, and kids are just great at asking questions. When they don't get something, with, when it's a new situation, when it's a new circumstance, when it's something that's challenging, they will ask how it's done, why it's done. And that's so normal. And uh, I, I'm a person who tries to understand things before asking. And I've known that that, that uh, makes me do something slower than if I would have asked questions. And I try to get reminder but by this, uh, work that it's so simple to just uh, check, double check. Uh, did, did I really uh, meant this or uh, did, did that um, task or that requirement 
was, was really about doing this or that, or I'm doing some extra work, or I'm doing entirely additional work that wasn't required by me. And this also involves documenting things, uh, describing them well enough so that people don't make assumptions which, and it's related also which, which roles does which activities uh, or what's the growth path in a community, uh, what's, what is the usual way to respond, which channels do we use to respond in, cer in certain projects or communities, and then we won't leave people with like false expectations. So again, it's uh, uh, our responsibility to take care of that. And it's also, as I said, I'm a non-tech person in tech environment. Uh, initially, when I start in a new team, I often get myself in a conversation when I hear abbreviations or terms that I don't understand. And uh, then I need to ask questions. But now when I need to onboard someone else or need to, to, to share information, I try to use less abbreviations or I try to explain a bit more so that uh, don't assume that people just just get it. Uh, and uh, I shared about how we can prevent making consumption is just documenting things better and uh, having a Q&A or uh, frequently asked questions, just allowing some more time and freedom. And this also means uh, being also aware and respectful of uh, people that would be shy or would have other reasons to don't really ask so uh, directly. So we need to provide various channels for them to ask just questions in a way that they will be comfortable asking the questions. And you always do your best. That was the fourth agreement which uh, concluded the first book uh, that I've shown you uh, from Don Miguel Ruiz. And it, here, it is about doing your best at a given moment. Uh, here, one critical part is at a given moment. Because uh, as I've chosen here a picture from um, a mountain hike, uh, at a given moment depends on the circumstances, on your physical condition, on your mental, emotional state, on the team's um, current conditions. And, uh, uh, and, all, and it's clear in the mountain, you adapt the goal when the weather is bad, when the group's not feeling well or whatever. And, so, uh, and we're much more judgmental to ourselves in our work. Uh, and right now, I'm definitely jet lagged. I lost my voice. Uh, so I, my personal best today would be different from my personal best when I prepare the presentation and uh, practice for it at home. So being kinder to myself and to others about this best uh, would really help also communicate and negotiate the goals with others and in the team and uh, in the company and in personal lives, of course. Uh, and here it's also related to doing. So always do your best. Uh, emphasis on doing rather than just thinking about it, planning about it, and lying on the couch and don't move. <laughs> uh, here, uh, what, uh, what the book says and what I try to remind myself constantly and others is to try. Even if, even if I fail, at least I've tried. And with open source projects, we, we see that not all there is a lot of innovation experiments involved. Not everything would be great. And, uh, but until we try it out, that we, will, we would never know. And part of my work in the Open Source Program Office is also um, helping projects be sunsetted. So helping recognize, helping teams as uh, good open source citizens communicate when they're no longer actively maintaining a project. And I'm uh, trying to investigate, and I was uh, reading and researching about it to, to see, and that's 
according to that data that I found on GitHub. Uh, uh, so I'm assuming here, so estimating that about 16% of projects will be inactive in one year after they've been published on GitHub or published. Uh, so you know that not everything will end up being used. And in five years, actually only half of the projects will remain uh, when, when this trend continues. And I've observ observed it and uh, uh, derived data from it to, to confirm my observations. So that should be okay. That's part of the innovation. If companies allow and if uh, individuals are allowed to experiment and to try, they will have things out there that won't be successful. Uh, and we, if we are accepting it, we will be less judgmental to ourselves on that again. Uh, and that will give us the freedom to act and to try out more things. And the fifth uh, agreement is an entire book because in a way it helps explain how to apply the previous four. Uh, uh, given that we as humans are all biased. Um, that's why we have all uh, this unconscious behavior or perceptives. That's why we try to educate ourselves more. and. Uh, that's why we are all telling the stories in a different ways, and we're all having our different stories. And um, it's called be skeptical and listen for the truth. And skeptical exactly because of these biases and being aware of our own biases, of everyone else's biases, uh, and just be open to listen to, to uh, and this is, uh, that listening is the entire whole art because there is a lot of layers of what we actually listen, what we hear when we listen, who we listen to. Uh, and it requires being present and respectful of everything that we, we will come up and not only to others, but again to ourselves. Being respectful uh, also means that for me, uh, I'm based in Bulgaria, in Varna, uh, which is so far away. And being here in Canada, I see so many things that are just different. And, uh, and I know that I have unconscious biases. I know have, that I have my fears. I did a, a, a quick uh, escape through the, to the mountains, uh, drove through the Squamish and Whistler, and I was, always, I was almost frightened to see bears because I've seen rumors that there are a lot here and they're scary. And these are my biases on how people are surviving here. And I know that I have many more biases that I'm unconscious about. And uh, if I accept that, I'll be much more um, willing to grow and to develop uh, and to learn in these areas. And what uh, I do in my job to really, uh, to really support this uh, being skeptical and listening is doing interviews, trying to listen to people, asking questions, allowing them this time to pause so that they also learn about themselves by answering my questions because this is just the, the, the necessary time to be present and to pause. And, um, as I share that, I will show some examples of my day-to-day -day job and how I am applying the principles. This was a, a graph that I uh, worked on to summarize different activities so that my role involves in the Open Source Program Office. And I did it way before I thought about this uh, presentation and having the, the five uh, agreement, but it's so much, but I so much liked how they match, of course, in every task that I do, uh, I need to be reminded and I need to be remind myself applying this, uh, these agreements, but I could really um, easily relate the, all the maintainer communications work and uh, uh, sending regular updates, uh, organizing meetups to the um, 
being impeccable with your word and uh, all the communication efforts, also what I shared as an example of uh, security work is uh, here I need to be constantly reminded about not taking things personally and just doing my regular job. Uh, documentation, best practices, helping out uh, people to get on board it on the different, uh, in different ways, in different tools. It's uh, again with I need to to not make assumptions. I need to really explain well, uh, explain better, and learn to to be uh, inclusive in my language, in my in my actions to more people. Uh, and I mentioned about uh, cleaning up and uh, doing uh, working on some setting of projects in terms of doing my best. Uh, in this case, it's in the end of the life cycle of a project and regular assessments in, in meet, and uh, meetings, interviews, uh, which allow people to pause and uh, listen for the truth. So to really uh, wrap it up, the book, The Fifth Agreement, uh, ends with the sentence, uh, thank you for helping me change the world, uh, by which the author means that by uh, everyone who reads the book, if they uh, implement these agreements and change their mindset, they'll change their own world. And if they change their own world, that's the only way uh, they can change the world. So we can only change ourselves in order to change uh, the bigger picture. So uh, what I really would invite you to do, and I will pause for a minute, which will be, really uh, really uncomfortable for me to stand here in silence, but I really want to uh, allow you the time to think of how you can apply the five agreements in your daily work life and just, just, just have this minute to think about it, maybe write it down and have a mental note about it. And I will start the minute. And the minute is over, but if you need more time, uh, I will be happy to allow you that time. Just looking at people, I think you uh, have some thoughts in your mind and what I would uh, encourage you to um, use the rest of the conference, use the rest of this presentation maybe, as well to um, take time, share and discuss. And, uh, and we, uh, as uh, humans working in a fast uh, growing uh, industry environment uh, in this world, we try to think big of really uh, 10 things or 100 things or a great big project to start up when, when we want to change something or, or it might be only me, <laughs> how, how I do it. Uh, and that's, that's why these reminders stays commit to one small actionable item. So not really some great commitments because then, the, then it gets uh, again into the trap of failing when it's too big, being self-judgmental, don't want you to try again. Uh, but when it's something small, actionable, which we could do, and some uh, some ideas about it would be really to uh, to check on uh, some of the 
yeah, I will go back to, to the previous topic to really uh, next time when uh, uh, when uh, I feel that I'm going emotional and I'm going to react to an email or message to instead of that uh, get out of my desk or my uh, workplace, go for a cup of tea or a cup of water, allow myself to breathe and relax and then think, just, just consider if I wouldn't think that personally, what my reaction, if I wouldn't take that person, what, what my reaction might be. And that might be as simple as that and not commit to do it every time, just commit to do it once. <laughs> and if it, if it succeeded once, then you might do it again. Uh, uh, and of course, or sometimes when you're feeling that you're failing with something, it's just get reminder, is that, was that the best I could do today? Yes or no? If it, the answer is yes, so then, uh, yeah, give yourself uh, the gratitude that at least you tried, even if it was a bad day for you. So that's my invitation to really use that time. Do uh, you probably remember this disagreement? Uh, and uh, I really thank you for helping change the world because that's what you do by being in this conference and uh, being um, there for, for yourself and for others and being in the communities that you are in. And with this, I allow for any questions, comments, sharings. <laughs> And we'll be happy to hear from anyone who has anything to, to comment. Or questions might be just related to anything of the work topics that I mentioned. If not, we can talk later. Or, and their microphones, we need to use them for the live stream or I can repeat the questions, of course. I thought you have, but I'm not sure. <laughs> uh. Okay. Okay, then thank you all. <laughs>